It's 1.13 p.m. Uh, we're back on the record. The court received a note which did a mark exhibit seat 23 in evidence from the jury, quote, we have reached a verdict, end quote. Uh, the procedure is we're going to bring the jurors out and we're going to have the alternates come back in. I'm going to have the four person uh, deliver the verdict. Thereafter, I'm going to poll the jury to make sure that each juror agrees that the verdict delivered by the four person is that juror's verdict. I understand this is an emotional case. I don't know what the verdict is, but I expect everyone to maintain appropriate courtroom decorum. There should be no outbursts. The jury has to decide the case based upon the evidence. A lot of people have speculated about a lot of things that aren't in evidence, so the jury is required to decide it based upon the evidence submitted in this courtroom. So I'd ask you to please remain calm. Uh, after we're done with that, I give the jury a dismissal instruction, uh, which gives them some indication uh, of what they can talk about, if anything, and then I thank them for their service. At that point, the Sheriff's Department is going to escort the jurors out of the courthouse to their vehicles. Uh, I hope I don't have to say this, but no person can harass, threaten, or intimidate any juror for any reason, especially their service on this case. If that happens, if any jurors are intimidated or have someone come up to them and threaten them or even express some dissatisfaction with them, you're subject to being arrested by the Sheriff's Department for jury tampering or harassment. Uh, and I certainly don't want that to happen. That to happen. So uh, the Sheriff's Department is prepared to deal with that. There's extra officers on staff all over the county complex to make sure that doesn't happen. So I ask everyone to please respectfully comply with those requirements. Any from counsel before we bring the jury up? No, Judge, thank you. Where are our alternates? Okay, so as soon as they get to the foyer, we'll bring out the deliberating jurors. They're in the foyer. 1.15 p.m., jury out. Thank you. Please be seated, everyone, except the defendant and defense counsel. <clears throat> All right, so the 12 deliberating jurors are back in the in the jury box. In addition, we have our alternates seated in the jury box to prevent them from appearing on camera. So those are seats 4 and 11. Uh, in addition, seats 3 and 13 are empty as those jurors have been excused. Madam Foreperson, would you please rise? Madam Foreperson, has the jury reached the verdict? They have, sir. And is that verdict unanimous? Yes. Ma'am, I'm going to read to you each count. Please give me the jury's unanimous response. One, how do you find as to count one endangering the welfare of a child? Guilty. Two, how do you find as to count two murder? Not guilty. Three, how do you find as to the charge of aggravated manslaughter? Guilty. And you did not answer question four? Yes, sir. At this time, thank you, Madam Court, for you to be seated. At this time, I'm going to poll the jurors. Members of the jury, you've heard the verdict as read by your foreperson. At this point, I'm going to ask each juror by number, except the two alternates, to respond yes if the verdict read by the foreperson is your verdict, no if the verdict read by the foreperson is not your verdict. Juror number two. Juror number three is empty. Juror number four is alternate. Juror number five. Yes. Juror number six. Yes. Juror number seven. Yes. Juror number eight. Yes. Juror number nine. Juror number 10. Yes. Juror number 11 is an alternate. Juror number 12. Yes. Juror number 13 has been excused. Juror number 14. Yes. Juror number 15. Yes. Juror number 16. Yes. Is counsel satisfied that the verdict is unanimous? Yes. At this time, I would ask the clerk to record and note in the minutes that the verdict is unanimous. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the function you have performed is one of the most important civic duties you can ever be called upon to fulfill. With the return of your verdict, your service in this case is complete. Upon your discharge, you are not required 
except upon court order to discuss your deliberations or verdict with anyone. Additionally, no attorney or party or any person acting on their behalf is permitted under our rules of court to examine you or question you or even to discuss with you your verdict or your deliberations or your role in this matter. In some states, judges are actually able to stay afterwards and speak to the jurors about the experience. In New Jersey, judges and attorneys are specifically prohibited from doing that. If anyone approaches you associated with the case, the attorneys or the parties, please notify me immediately. It's possible you may be contacted by others, including members of the media. As you know, obviously we had media coverage in this trial. It will be up to each of you to decide whether or not to speak to those persons or entities about your service as a juror. If you agree to be interviewed, you may discuss whatever you want in whatever manner you deem appropriate. However, I'd ask you to keep these things in mind. The key to your function as jurors has been the free discussion amongst yourselves during deliberations, and the privacy of those deliberations is essential to the continuation of the fair administration of justice. All jurors have the prerogative to keep confidential their communications with their fellow jurors during deliberations. In fact, it is in the public interest that there be the utmost freedom of discussion in the jury room, and that each of you be permitted to express your views without concern for public reaction or criticism. Under no circumstances should you make a statement to the media or anyone else that you would not be willing to repeat under oath in court in the presence of your fellow jurors. But on a personal note, I want to thank you for your service. I know we told you in the beginning that it's a civic duty, but this case was a long case. It was difficult scheduling issues, and it was a difficult case with a lot of emotion. I told you we had the best justice system in the world, and one of the reasons, probably the principal reason, is because our Constitution guarantees a right to a trial by jury, and we can't do this without you. It's truly remarkable witnessing this reality and your participation in it. It's not only been my pleasure to have you here, it's been my privilege to have you here. I'm going to give you one final instruction, and I'm sure the attorneys join in that, by the way, uh, our thanks and our appreciation for your attention and also how you've gotten along as a group. But I'm going to give you one final instruction, and that is the Sheriff's Department is going to escort you out that door, out a separate private entrance to the courthouse. Uh, I don't want to risk that somebody who's upset one way or the other comes up to you. They're going to make sure there's plenty of officers taken to your cars. So uh, if you want to exchange some telephone numbers or something like that, if you become friends, I guess you do that quickly because I would really appreciate that you get in your vehicles and you go home and get out of here uh, in the event there's any uh, reaction by anyone. So again, thank you so much for your service. Just hand Corporal Bennett your jury pass on the way out and the verdict sheet. And uh, it's been my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Yes. The exception being any member of the media that needs to step out for work reasons, you can do that. So.
Yes, Ms. Moore, do we have a sentencing date? Yes, sir. August 2nd, 1.30 p.m. in person. And that's a Friday? Yes, sir. Mr. Lucci, is that acceptable for you? Yes, Judge. All right, anything else from counsel for the other side? No, Judge, thank you. All right, defendant was detained pre... Defendant was detained pre-trial, uh, the jury having found uh, him guilty of aggravated manslaughter, a first-degree crime, and endangering the welfare of a child, the second-degree crime, order that he be remanded pursuant to Rule 3, colon 21 dish for a pending sentence. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Counsel, it was a pleasure to have all of you here. Uh, both sides did an excellent job. Make my job easier. Thank you both. Thank you all for you, I should say. I've been following this case very closely and normally as a YouTuber you should be able to hold it together in all the cases that you dive into. But I have to admit that Corey Michelow, he got under my skin right away and I got very emotional in this case. We have all been following this case very closely and we've all been waiting for the verdict. And I was glued to the screen yesterday, I didn't move a muscle because I didn't want to miss anything. And when the jury came out and I heard the verdict, I just jumped out of the couch and I shouted, yes. I also saw how relieved Brianna was and I am so happy for her. Now we just have to wait for the sentencing and I hope that the judge saw Chris shaking his head at the jury and the verdict. And I also hope he will be locked up for many, many years. Corey Michelow was finally heard. And he got his justice. Before I end my video, I want to give a huge shout out to the prosecutors in this case. And thank you for making this happen. It was really good work. Thank you, Christine Lento. And I hope I pronounced this name right. It was Jamie Strong. Other than that, I want to wish you all a beautiful day. And until the next one, take care and stay safe. Bye.